Hello everyone and welcome to Thailand Unplugged. Let's have a look at some of the news we've got coming up today. Australian journalist Chang Li detained in China and possibly used as a bargaining chip. Thailand's government backs off on the submarine deal because of extreme public outcry about it. And Thailand doesn't really need submarines, it needs the money to kickstart its economy. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe to resign for health reasons. Hello there, I'm Stephen Clark with the ever popular Johnny Siam, bringing you the latest news from Southeast Asia and the wonderful land of smiles, Thailand. Those and other stories coming right up. Bangkok, the jam to end all jams. Storm paralyzes the traffic citywide. Heavy rains throughout Monday night and Tuesday morning left much of Bangkok congested and flooded, adding to the woes of the rush hour. Extra traffic police have been deployed along Silam Rama 4, Rama 1, and New Pachambury, Sukhumvit, Rama 9, Rungkampen, and Pachambury, and Lat Prao Road, a police spokesman said. Most motorways and highways leading into Bangkok are clogged. Most motorways and highways leading into Bangkok are clogged, with traffic stretching for kilometres. The especially bad ones are Motorway 9, Chalong Rat, and Surat Expressway routes to Bangkok's north. Rose in Pakrat district in Northumbria is backed up for kilometres. Changwatana Road is currently at a virtual standstill. Lat Prao Road also witnessed its own apocalypse. Roads leading into Bangkok from Samat Prakkon should be avoided, police said. Even the first floor of Parliament is flooded, according to reports of the scene. The National Police Chief has called on all the capital drivers to cooperate with traffic police and to take steps to protect themselves by checking the weather forecast. Planning their route and ensuring their vehicle is roadworthy prior to setting off. And believe me, I've heard from a lot of people from Bangkok and it is really underwater. Yes, Bangkok has really become the Vienna of Southeast Asia. China has given no reason for detaining a high-profile Australian journalist, Cheng Li. Trade Minister of Australia said the reason why high-profile Australian journalist Cheng Li has been detained in Beijing has not been made clear by the Chinese authorities. Mr Birmingham told today the federal government is offering consular support to Cheng and her family. We are doing everything we can in providing her and her family with assistance through what is no doubt a difficult time for them. Mr Birmingham confirmed the federal government had been formally told by authorities on August the 14th of her detention. But they had not said why the television anchor with Chinese state-run channel CGTN was being held. But we all continue to work to ensure that the right assistance is provided to give her and her family every support, Mr Birmingham said. Australia's consular officials spoke with Cheng at the detention facility via a video link last Thursday. The detention is likely to further strain the already fraught relationship between Canberra and Beijing. Cheng studied in Queensland's university and began her career in finance, where she worked for corporations including Cadbury. She is a high profile anchor of the global business show on English language channel of the Chinese Global Television Network and state run media organization. This is the Chinese Communist Party's latest tactic. If a country disagrees with China or blames China for the Chinese coronavirus, they arrest their citizens and charge them with all sorts of juicy acts of espionage, drug smuggling, whatever they can come up with, and usually ends with the death sentence. As a warning to all reporters to report positively about the wonderful Chinese Communist Party.
or you will end up in jail and possibly executed if they can get their hands on you in China. Chang's two younger children remain in Melbourne waiting for their mother to return from a wonderful trip to China. Thailand's government backs off submarine deal. Thailand's intentions to buy two more submarines from China has run into vocal resistance, with the country's main opposition party questioning the need to go ahead with the acquisition against the backdrop of the economy's slump because of the Chinese coronavirus. With a recent poll revealing that one of the public's biggest concerns is the government's decision to spend billions of baht on two submarines. Many will welcome the news that officials have decided to shelve those plans for now. If not the polls, the outrage on social media was a good indication about the public's mood over the matter. A survey showed that the controversial purchase of two more submarines from China and the ongoing political unrest are two of the biggest worries among the general public right now. The current government has now decided to postpone the purchase, which could cost around 22.5 billion baht, with China agreeing to delay the deal for a year. The government has cut 3 billion baht from the budget for the first instalments. The Royal Thai Navy says the decision to postpone procurement came from the PM Priyat Chinacha following discussions with China. The Royal Thai Navy has defended the planned deal saying that submarines have an essential role to play in protecting Thailand's maritime security. Let's have a look at that, shall we? They have emphasized the need to provide maritime security for its littoral and exclusive economical zone. This includes counter piracy and countering illegal trafficking in its territorial waters. Thailand's geographical location makes it a convenient transit point and destination for human trafficking and drugs. In terms of counter piracy efforts, incidents of piracy and siphoning theft of fuel are known to occur in the Gulf of Thailand. Nevertheless, the impact of submarines on combating the trafficking and piracy is minimal because submarines are slow while smugglers are very fast and pirates are not deterred by an invisible threat. Now listen to this, smaller patrol vessels could do the job at lower costs and much much more efficient. With no clear operational role for the submarines, the Royal Thai Navy's reason for purchasing submarines may be more associated with keeping up with the Joneses or keeping up with its Southeast Asian neighbours, if you like. Please bear in mind, Thailand's navy is very weak compared to its neighbours. But then again, they do own an aircraft carrier. But the problem with that one is it's got no planes at all. It never had any planes. It was going to have the Harrier jump jet put on it, but uh, the deals fell through and uh, the aircraft carrier sits in um, port in Satahip permanently and it is affectionately known as the Royal Barge. You can see it if you go down to Satahip, it's quite a, quite a big uh, tourist attraction, be it a very expensive tourist attraction. But just recently they've turned it into a helicopter launch pad which is uh, probably a good idea. But hey, there's plenty of space there for some submarines as well I guess. They could possibly park alongside it. Anyway, tell us what you think in the comments below. Should, should Thailand buy submarines or not? Or should they spend the money rebooting their economy? Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe will resign. Tokyo, Japan, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe intends to resign due to health issues. The Prime Minister had reportedly complained to aides of fatigue and a number of the media noticed him walking with difficulty. Speaking to reporters, Harisho Siko, a senior executive with Abbey's Liberal Democratic Party, LDP if you like, said the Prime Minister had expressed his intention to resign to the party's officials. The government aides said they had also been informed of Abbey's intentions to stand down. Prime Minister Abe had been expected to hold a press conference later on Friday to update on the Chinese coronavirus situation in Japan. On Monday morning, Abe visited Keio University Hospital in Tokyo for what was his second hospital visit in a week. 
Promised Abby suffers from colitis, a non-curable inflammatory bowel disease, which forced him to resign during his first stint as the country's leader from 2006 to 2007. He became Prime Minister again in 2012. Japan has been lobbying for inclusion in the Five Eyes Intelligence Network, which includes the United States, Britain, Canada, New Zealand and Australia, to help bolster its defences against the rise of the Chinese military. Prime Minister Abe is Japan's longest serving head of government in terms of consecutive days in office. It will be sad if he goes, he's very popular all over the world. Thailand looks to cut Malacca Strait shipping time by land linking between India and the Pacific Oceans. The highway and rail passageway connecting two oceans would bypass the congested Straits of Malacca off Malaysia and Singapore. Thailand is saying the 100 km long land bridge between two seaports would replace previous plans for a canal and would cut shipping time by over two days. The latest proposal replaces the Kra Canal plan, which was talked about for decades that the plan would have seen a canal crossing the skinniest point of Thailand through the Phuket and Krabi area, chopping around 1200 kilometers off the shipping journey. It has now been dropped on environmental grounds. The new project is expected to reduce shipping time by two days by bypassing the Straits of Malacca, which runs along the peninsula of the Malaysian southwest coast, before curving east past Singapore. This passageway is notoriously congested, as well as being a favourite haunt for piracy. Incidents of piracy increased from 8 in 2018 to 30 last year. If the project went ahead, it would be a major blow to Singapore, which has built its fortune on being the Southeast Asia's shipping trade hub at the turning point at the bottom of the Malacca Straits. So there's a political divide in Thailand. On one side, it's the traditional establishment, and on the other side, it's the liberal new generation. In Thailand, the opposing forces compete with the cage of the Thai-style democracy in which the traditional establishment holds the military, executive legislation, judicial and bureaucratic powers, with the support of the elite economic class and the privilege of 250 jaunta appointed senates. The Liberals new generation on the other hand has creative signs and a cool hashtag. So what do you do about all that? Bring balance to the forces. For a society to move forward there must exist a balance and there must be a compromise. The Liberals demand movement will not get every demand at the snap of a finger. The fight for democracy is one step at a time. Of course, the first step is hitting the delete on the 250 jointly appointed senators so that they may at least have a national election on equal terms. One person, one vote. But there is a problem that stands in the way of both sides. Preventing the Thai nation from achieving a balance for them to move forward. His name is Priyat Chinacha or the Prime Minister of Thailand. Earlier this month he said he would listen to the young protesters. By the middle of the month he gave a national television address and said the young are the moral courage and the nation's future. The former was perhaps a tiny second of uncle moments. The latter perhaps was words written by someone else. The possibility of a national dialogue. What he said on 26th of April 2020, however, should convince anyone who might have thoughts otherwise that with him in charge, Thailand cannot move forward. There cannot be a compromise. We cannot achieve any balance. Democracy is not a possibility. He insinuated that the 2014 military coup was him personally saving the kingdom from chaos. He is responsible for the Thailand's fourth scheme, which he believes is the future of the nation. Thailand must have a Thai-style democracy. The action of the Thai protesters would cause the fall of the Thai nation, with the country ravaged by flames and chaos. 
In all of this, he believes the country owes him gratitude. Those who stand against him are ingrates and national haters. For Thailand to move forward, the establishment must put General Priyat Chinacha into retirement and also take with him General Prawat Wongsawan. This is not necessarily my opinion, but tell us what you think in the comments below. Do you think General Priyat Chinacha should go to Thailand Prime Minister or should he stay? <laughs> An anti-government rally in Khon Ken. Khon Ken, a group of students and supporters of the Free People Group, staged a brief rally in the Mong district of this southern province on Saturday night, calling for Prime Minister Priyat Chinacha to resign and dissolve parliaments. The writing of a new constitution and an end to the government's intimidation of the people. The rally at the Democracy Monument in Surachet Road in Khon Ken municipal area started at 9pm. Core members of the northeastern branch of the group took turns to deliver anti-government speeches on the stage before a former election candidate for the Samanchan party read out a statement. The statement called for an end to the intimidation of the people, the government's legal action against people with different opinions, equality in education, inequities in the justice process, and the plunder of natural resources. We want rights and freedom and human dignity because we are not slaves. We want democracy which belongs to the people. We want equality, education and justice in the judicial process. We want the discrimination of power and the right of committees to manage their own resources. We want new democracy and society, said the statement. The rally continued with a speech by core members of the group and music played by various bands. The demonstration was watched by police and authorities and was called off at 10 p.m. Hello everyone, Johnny Siam reporting. I don't know if anybody has actually been following the rallies, the students, the protests. But in democracy, everybody has the right to express their opinions. Well, that's what we believe. The Thai Prime Minister has come out and said that not all students at the protests were voluntary. He said that peer pressure was a motivating factor. Interesting, he should say something like that. The main concern was the call for civil liberties and a new constitution, not like the constitution that was written by the now in power Junta. But as we can see, the students and supporters is going from strength to strength. So let's hope that they can all sit down and work it out. We don't want to see another Nana. Johnny out. <laughs>